Our assassin's drowning attempt on Frederick is interrupted by the butler. Fortunately, the assassin is able to mimic his victim's voice, sending the butler away and finishing off his dark deed in peace. The assassin has become melancholic instead of fleeing when he heard the dwarf Lord Olan had turned up at the estate, who forced his village into the mines and virtual slavery. He is so close to getting his revenge, but the assassin decides that now is not the time and disappears into the darkness to plot his revenge. He spends the next day gathering and distorting information, placing blame on Lady Redshield. He then reports his success to Ripley, and she seems eager for him to move on to his next target, Lord of High Castle, with no restrictions on his death. Before heading to High Castle, our assassin decides to do a personal job and take out Lord Olan. He finds and murders an unfortunate peasant and dresses the body in the livery of House Drooper and stages it on the road to look like an ambush for Lord Olan to stumble upon and hopefully delay his journey. Once he sees the dwarf and discovers the body, he heads to the nearest inn and waits, assuming the dwarf will overnight there as well. Lord Olan does show up and gets a room. The assassin waits until the dwarf sleeps before making his move. He sneakily sabotages the dwarf's equipment, then strikes fast and hard, killing the dwarf before he can even react. He sneakily hides the bodies out in the wilderness, then stashes the mithril plate for later retrieval. How will the High Castle task go? With his revenge complete, will our assassin keep serving Melkis? Will they ever explain the dwarf's disappearance? Let's find out now on Assassin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Assassin. How are you doing today, Rob? I am fully prepared for anything you throw at me. I have the deadliest of weapons. Oh my god. Not a plastic straw. You'll kill oh, everything. Yeah. The sea turtles, Rob. Think of the sea turtles. And the seagulls. Think of the seagulls and the manta rays. Ah, screw the manta rays. <gasps> you know what they did. Wait, so spare the seagulls, but screw the manta rays? Really? They know what they did. All right. Well, we've been on hiatus for a week. How has your week been? Free week? Good. I, I basically... Um, I'm just less than 24 hours from having gone full castaway. I shaved up and, and got a haircut and everything just for you. Wow. And because I figured anybody who spends a week at Burning Man is clearly has high standards of, you know, personal hygiene and, you know, ex and expectations of others. Mhm. Mm the highest of standards. You wouldn't even you wouldn't even know. Wouldn't even know. Uh, so I guess everything is in order and going smoothly. So before something has a chance to mess it all up, let's hop into game. Let's do it. The final mission. The final countdown. Final countdown. Yes. So where last we left our intrepid hero, uh, they had... Well, we, we've all just heard that recap, but uh, you had killed a noble son and uh, also a bodyguard. Uh, right? And there was some sort of personal relationship bodyguard between... This sounds so trivial and not like somebody who should have kicked my ass. Uh, okay, how about ninth level fighter, right hand man of the Count who oppressed and enslaved your family and drove you to murder? Yes. Okay. That's much better. Okay. There and we go. had a vicious weapon, a literal vicious weapon. Literal vicious weapon, yes. Uh, so here you are, not too terribly long uh, after the events of our last session. 
on the road between Galita and High Castle when you see none other than your very wonderful handler, Ripley. Uh, she is coming down the road from the Galita direction uh, on horseback and sort of like going at a fairly quick pace. Yeah. You know, I, before I can engage in this, I, I just got to say, Claus the Radiant has a pretty good point. Uh oh. For having just spent a week in the desert, you do look awfully pale, Neil. Um, I don't tan well. I burn. Um, so, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, so pale as to maybe even cast doubt on uh, your story. I, I mean, who would? cover up something with a, a tr week-long trip to the desert. What what else could I possibly be doing? have left you so pale? I don't know. Maybe you spent the last week in a gimp suit? Completely covered? <laughs> Those two things aren't mutually exclusive there, Rob. I could have done them both. I suppose that's true. <laughs> um, but no gimp suits for me. They're, they're too expensive. I can't afford them. You know, the zippers and the, the leathers, it's just... <sighs> well, you know, I, I did see a Pinterest about how you can be the de, uh, DIY? No, DIY. DIY? With, yeah, with a, uh, you know, a surfing wetsuit. Really? Uh, and what led you to this revelation? How, how did you come across this Pinterest story? I was checking for a friend. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so you're on your way <laughs> towards High Castle <laughs> when Ripley is coming up behind you on a horse, moving at pretty good speeds. All right. I stepped to the side of the road so as not to be run down. Just no, no trying to flag her down, no seeing what's up, just, like, getting out of the way. Well, I, well I'm standing there watching, I assume. Okay is looking for me. Yeah, she's definitely looking for you. And as you step to the side and see what's going on, uh, she pulls up pretty quickly on the reins and you notice that there is a body draped over the front of her saddle as well. Uh, and she looks around drastically. It's uh, not the dwarf, is it? It is not the dwarf's body. Okay. It is a youngish, oops, I this one. Uh, where's my D6s? Yeah, it is a youngish human woman dressed in uh, security clothes, like um, not quite like a full on guards outfit because she's not wearing any armor. But you notice she's got the Drooper family sigil on her and she's got the like the clothes of a, a messenger writer. Um, looks like some sort of agent of the family. And there is a, an empty scabbard dangling at her side. She's very clearly dead. There's a, a slash across her neck and a, a big bloody streak down her front. I don't know. I was starting to maybe get some plans for that uh, outfit. Uh, Ripley looks at you and goes, what have you done? My job. Olin? Furin? What happened to him? That will be a question people will wonder. Yes, they're wondering that question at the exact same time. They're wondering what happened to Frederick Trooper. The two of them going missing within a day of each other? Are you kidding me? Olin didn't check in on his way back to High Castle. This person, she says, pointing to the, the body draped over her saddle, was on their way to the keep to report this missing and doubly suspicious activity. We have to move quickly. You need to get rid of Count Drooper today before word reaches them that his head of security is missing and his son is dead. That is my plan. She looks back on the road behind her. Well, people are gonna be following soon. You gotta go now. I am. Word will get there by tonight. You could lend me your horse if you're worried. She tosses the body off the horse, uh, hands the reins over to you, 
and says, I will do what I can to stall them, but go quickly. All right. I'll ride into town. All right. Uh, she stays behind, kind of dragging the body, placing it behind a tree, and stands in the middle of the road as you take off and head for High Castle. You have a nifty High Castle map and everything? Uh, not the whole city. Uh, that would be overwhelming. It would take us hours just to figure out what we're even looking at. Do we have uh, a nifty High Castle castle map? Yes, we do have the small palace that the Count lives in. Uh, you make your way into High Castle. Actually, I shouldn't say that all the way. You make your way to the gates of High Castle. Uh, High Castle is one of those cities and around these parts that doesn't really like people walking in and out with weapons. Um, you can get things smuggled in. Last time you were here, we kind of glossed over this, but uh, you had weapons awaiting for you while you were in here. Uh, this time you're showing up with what, you've got your bow and your rapier out publicly. So when you get here, no, the, I, I wrap those up, wrap them up. I, I always have the bow and the, the rapier wrapped up when and I'm traveling around and just the dagger at my belt. Where are they? Where do they reside? Uh, they're strapped across my back two cloth wrapped bundles. Sure. So you, you get to the gate. Uh, the guards here are looking to make sure that everyone keeps the peace and they you notice them disarming various other folks who willingly hand over their weapons and as you arrive at the gate on horseback they ask your business saying <clears throat> hello there son uh what's your business here in high castle i said i'm delivering a message good good uh any weapons on you i have a dagger that's fine. No, nothing else. I say, well, I and I point to the two bundles. I do have uh, a rapier and bow that I use to protect myself on the road. We'll keep them here for you. Uh, do you have a sign or a, a symbol? Do you know your letters? I, I, I look indignant and say, I, I can make the letters, the first letters in my name. That's all we need. Uh, he'd pull out like a little clipboard and some pen and paper, and he like flips through some pages, looks at you, writes like a very brief description. You know, tall man, dark hair, wide brim hat, dark features, goatee. All right, and uh, takes the bundles from you and asks you to sign for them, and you know, we'll go put them in storage, and you can retrieve them whenever you want. Okay. Um, but your dagger is fine. They don't mind if you have that on that you. And uh, you don't have any other else that we need to be concerned about. No, no, no. Looks fine. Yeah, they don't notice your brass knuckles. They're tucked away in a pocket somewhere, I assume. Uh, and they let you ride on in. High Castle's a fairly large town. It's the second largest town in all of Aridon. Uh, and the palace is easily spotted from a distance. It rests on a, a small hill near the middle, not really the south middle of town. And you can make your way there, busy city streets. All right. Um, as I pass through the busy city streets, I would like to buy three more daggers. Can do. Um, you, I think you still have a buttload of money, metric buttload of money, sorry. Um, so no problem. That's you 10 can, times as big as a regular buttload. It really is. Uh, you can go ahead and purchase two extra daggers and have them on you. I want a three. Three extra daggers and have them on you. Uh, you also have your invisibility potion, your immovable rod, your boots of elven kind, and your gloves of swimming and climbing. Mm-hmm. All right, so one dagger is in each boot, and the other one is at the small of my back. Could I could I draw the one at the small of my back fairly quickly if I need to? Uh, yeah. Let's say it's like tucked up underneath your armor, or tucked into your pants. How how would you affix it to the small? I was imagining of the back? just like with the, the like tucked into my belt at an angle that I can grab. Perfect. Tucked into the belt at a proper angle, and then maybe the handle tucked under your shirt or something? Uh, under my cloak. Under your cloak? All right. 
Fantastic. Uh, so here you are. In High Castle, you have eyes on the palace. Small palace, really. It's a surprisingly quaint palace for a such a rich and powerful noble. Ah. Uh, well, Sophie, I say it looks like we didn't have the budget to buy extensive maps for this palace. <laughs> Uh, Sophie meows in understanding. And as you get closer to the palace, you see that it is partially being renovated. Uh, it appears that the it was once more of a, a castle-like structure, and it is slowly being replaced with more of like a marble palace structure. The, the front gate and front turrets of the old castle still stand, but it looks like the, the back of the palace has been redecorated and rewalled to be uh, more comfortable to live in and less defensive in nature. That said, there is still a front gate and there are a pair of guards standing at the front gate. How, like when we talk about renovation, are there like open spots in the walls? There are lots of workers going around. Uh, no. Right now, it looks like the outer construction of the <clears throat> the part that's being renovated is done, and there's, like, inside renovations being done. You know, the windows are still in place, but tiles are getting ripped off, and there's a little bit of scaffolding on the inside, and um, there's, you know, mule carts full of debris being pulled out. Um, it looks like it is still operationally safe from the outside, except for that small heat exhaust port that we don't need to worry about. Um, but it's just in a, a transition state between fortification and palace. All right, so when you say that there's like donkey carts hauling things out, like out of the entire compound? Yes, out of the compound. All right. Um, is there anything that particularly, I'm guessing that the workers are just wearing typical peasant clothes. Yep. There's nothing really identifying about being a constructionist person. Just wearing their day laborer clothes. Um, you know, they've got significant muscle mass from being construction workers, uh, but their clothes are cheap and dirty. Do many of them have, uh, I mean, I'm guessing they have tools. Do they actually have like tool belts with uh, any? Uh, or anything? Hmm. Tool belts. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm sure some of them do. The people that are hauling things on donkey carts aren't the sort of like tool belt carrying workers. These are more of the uh, low level laborers that are just hauling things away. But through the gates, you can see that there's a, a marble worker up there working on a statue. Uh, and there next to the marble worker are a pair of roofers who are examining some tiles and talking about them. Uh, and they have the appropriate you know, they've got, what do you call that thing that you spread um, mortar with? That little flat, it's like an iron, but it's flat. Oh, a uh, trowel? Yeah, a mortar trowel. They've got their mortar trowels and their belts and their hammers and some nails and like a little pouch of, so you can't have a pouch of mortar, but the equivalent of that lying around. All right. I'm going to go to an inn. Mm -hmm. I will... Uh, quickly get a room, stow Sophie there. She hangs out in the room, lounging on the bed that you have rented just for her. This whole bed just for Sophie. She mm -hmm. appreciates it. And I open the window so she can get out of the roof or whatever if she wants. <sighs> a fresh breeze? She's really being taken care of. And I'll get a saucer of milk for her also from the, uh, the inn. What? No tuna? I don't have what is this, a four-star hotel? Ugh, I'll live, I guess. All right, so I, I gesture to the window as I'm leaving, like, make sure you get your exercise, Sophie. I don't want to be bitten in hard-to-reach places. Sorry, I've, I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 2 since, <laughs> uh, <laughs> since graduating. <laughs> I always go back to that as, like, a standard... <sighs> I just graded all my papers. Now I can be brain dead for a while, sort of exercise. <laughs> all right. Sophie's tucked away safe and sound. There is this estate before you. 
and you only have so a few hours in I which changed, to get your job I changed done. my appearance to um, you know, peasant clothes. Mm -hmm. I am going to, um, I'm sure, be somewhere behind the inn here or something. There's dirt, or if they have stables, get myself fairly dusty. Mm -hmm. Can and do. I am going to go to uh, a metal worker. Mm -hmm. I would like to buy some tools and a shovel. Okay. Now, since we are so pressed for time, we're going to have like to... to sure, yes. Uh, we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with these shopping trips. We're going to have to figure out how much time they take because we are in a cramped situation. In fact, play slightly cramped situation soundtracks for I eagerly await hearing what a cramped soundtrack sounds like. Something by the cramps. Cramps? Is that a artist or a group? They're a, they're a punk band. Oh, please no. I'm not a big punk fan. Uh, all I know is that there was a... What, back when I used to work at a record store, they had an album that it was like a black cover with sort of a a zombieish looking person with like spiked up hair like drawn in yellow or something um so finding an iron worker and getting everything you need as quickly as possible is our goal here uh, how would you like to determine how quickly you can go about gathering the tools that you need? What would you say would be a good way to measure that? Because I know how much time you have before word arrives, and we're going to need to keep somewhat careful track of that. Well, I'm guessing minutes. I'm thinking a... It depends on if the metal worker has the stuff I want readily available, and I'm just looking for, like, used equipment is fine. But in a day without smartphones in an unfamiliar city, it might take you a while to find the metal worker, right? You know, finding the metal worker shop is going to be the most time consuming of the tasks. Can I you know? ask Can you imagine having to actually walk around town looking for things with your eyes instead of asking the birds? I asked the, the friendly innkeeper. <sighs> It's foiled again, Neil. Innkeeper. Yeah, there is a metal worker just down the road. All right. Yeah. Okay. Metal work. All right, your metal worker has the tools that you need. It's a big city, a lot of things coming through. They like to re uh, buy back old tools at an absurdly low rate and then sell them at almost full price. There, it's the yes, GameStop model it. of metalworking. Um, yes. These adventurers are constantly selling stuff to craftspeople for one quarter price. Mm -hmm. And yet never able to buy used goods for a discounted price. And yeah, I mean, you can buy them for three quarters of price. But, or whatever. Yeah. It's fine. Well, anyways, yeah, I'm just trying to get a couple of tools and a shovel. And full fledged leave. shovel, like a big long. Full on shovel, such as you might use to empty one of those carts that goes in and out. Wonderful. All right. You have your tools, you have your shovel, you make your way back to the palace. All right. How often are these carts going in and out? Uh, not very often. You know, that you arrive to see a cart being pulled away. And you can see one in there right now with a bunch of scrap being loaded onto it. There's some cinder blocks. There's a bunch of dust and dirt. There's some old chunks of wood, uh, little bits of metal that are being separated out to, for recycling uh, because everyone should recycle and they do here. Well, because metal is really valuable in a medieval society. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh... So there's not a cart leaving right now, but you see one, it, it'll probably be full in maybe an hour or so, judging by the rate at which they're going. All right, how many guards are at the gate here and how? There are a pair of guardsmen at the gates. All right, I don't want to wait an hour. Let's... 
also, I am at, are there any sort of sleazier inns that are nearby here? Uh, not near the palace. The palace isn't really in sleazy in territory, you know. It's well, in the nice it's part of town. Yeah, but a medieval town itself isn't all that big. It's not like you walk across it. And... Um, it's. I probably... mean, they're they're much more population dense than say Galita. <laughs> yeah, it's probably at least two square miles, though. Yeah, which means that it's, you know, it could be like a quarter mile to the sleazy part of town. Yeah. So all yeah, right. yeah, but I, that's about right. It's about a quarter mile to the sleazy part of town. Yeah. All right. I will take it. So how long you want to say that is that? Ten minutes? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, 10 minutes to get there. Check out your inn. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to go into the inn. I'm assuming in the sleazier part of town that there are uh, many working girls. Uh, yes. Yes, there are. There are plenty of working boys and girls here. All right. Uh, there are, many of them are hanging out on the streets. Although it's a little early in the day, so probably not as many are on the streets. Um, the brothels are probably quite full, though. All right. Well, I am looking for two to hire. Or what? I am looking to hire two of them. Okay, yeah, sorry. That makes sense. I thought you said something completely different. I said two to hire. Right, not two tires. I was like, huh? Tires? Okay, you find two. Uh, yes, after I use the prostitutes to distract the guards, then I'm gonna get like a tire, jam it over them so their arms are held and they're trapped to the tire going, whoa! Oh, see, I thought you were gonna get in the tire and have them roll you towards the keep, and so you'll just like roll in disguised. Then as everyone's like, who's rolling tires in the keep? You like sneak out. But see, then I'd be really obvious with all the little birds like um, flying above my head. And their chirping's really loud. It would attract a lot of attention. You're right. Yeah. Okay, good plan. Uh, are you looking for male, female, both? Uh, two female. Two females, okay. And I'm looking for, I mean, I'm guessing they're probably all fairly good at being chatty when they need to, but I'm, I'm looking for some who seem to have some pleasantly chatty manner. Sure. Uh, you're looking for people with um, social skills, right? Yes. Okay. Well, How so, much do I have left at this point? It's so ridiculous. By my last count, you had 8,500 copper. Is that right? Are we, are we really going to finish up this campaign out not talking about real money? Copper is the default currency. It is the way that we should communicate all monies. It solves so many problems. Uh, you can go ahead and still pay with gold and silver, but everything ought to be in the copper base. It Does makes it solve more the problem sense. of carrying around 8,500 copper? Well, you don't carry it in copper. You know, if you have $100 in your wallet, you don't have 100 ones in your wallet, usually. You know, you might have a couple of 20s, a couple of 10s, a few 5s, and some 1s. But you notice the thing you didn't do is call that 100,000 cents. But that's because a copper is not a penny. A copper 10, equates 000. to a dollar. And if you want me to, I can go into a 20-minute rant about how the copper equates to the dollar, not the penny. And that's really the default. That's the problem. That's why we moved to the copper economy, is because everyone thinks of copper as pennies, which is wildly misleading. And that's why when adventurers are like, what? I only get 10 gold for this. That's ridiculous, because they're thinking 10 gold is like $10, when really 10 gold is like $1,000, which is why we need to shift to the copper economy so that people actually have an appreciation for the value of gold, because everyone treats gold like dollars when it should be treated like hundreds of dollars rather than and then everyone thinks of copper like pennies when really that's a bunch of crazy talk this is why we shift to the copper economy is to make the greater gold and silver economy make sense i, I condensed it down to the two minute rant version 
but there is a five minute one and there's like an hour one that has charts and graphs and that is not a joke. That is a real presentation. We'll get to it another day. That's what people tune in for, Neil. <laughs> Maybe another time. Maybe we'll do a special show about the copper economy uh, and we'll link it here some other time. I think it's pretty clear, and I think we can all agree that people play D and D for the economics, for the economics, for the monetary uh, uh, coinage discussions here. Um, That's what I do it for. So, given that a copper is a dollar, roughly speaking, is one hundred. Copper, a fairly super generous amount for these, for each of these women? Yes. What would be a, a super, like... A gold piece a piece for, uh, well, you know, it really depends on how much time you're willing to, you want to purchase. Um, you know, gold piece an hour is a, a great rate, but a gold piece a night is maybe, is better than average, I would guess. I say to them, um, as you want to get people in by the way you talk people into something isn't telling them the whole thing you want them to do at first. Mm -hmm. It's get them to agree to step one. So instead of agreeing to go all the way to the final step, mm -hmm. you're just like now getting them to go from step one to step two. Right. And by the time they see the final step, they're in too deep and they can't yes, turn back. Exactly. Yeah. So the next show after assassination is going to be manipulation. It's our next project we're working on. Anyway, it's where I'm going to be coming in, talking a dragon by stages into giving me his treasure. <laughs> you know, starts and then with suicide. Yeah, it starts with, will you eat this princess for me? And that's step one. And by step 30, it's OK. And help me carry the treasure back to my place. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, we only accept the steps two through 29 are only for the $10,000 Patreon level subs. So, uh, well, well, no, no, remember, that. Neil, we, we talked about step two would be for the dollar level Patreon subs. Well, that's right. And then step three, if you donate up to $5, then you can see step three, which is only $4 more. Then you had to pay for the other episodes. So, I mean, how could you, why would you ditch this series at that point? Right, right. Then third, you get as a bonus. So, I mean, you have to sign up for number two. You're going to get three as a bonus. It's it's a freebie, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then now that you're three in, the fourth episode at $6. Seems but the fourth one's really important. You know, it's almost... I wouldn't quite say it's the key to the whole plan, but it's like the lock to the whole plan, you yeah. know? That's fair, that's fair. Yeah. Anyway, time is running out. <laughs> uh, I meant to say earlier, and it sort of slipped my mind, that we were going to sort of try and do this in reasonable real time. The more real time we spend talking, the more time passes in game. Uh, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll ignore that whole conversation that we just had <laughs> for that purpose, though, because that would be wildly unfair. Um, but here you are standing. <laughs> so, right, yeah, that's, so that's step six the, is, is the, urgency. Yeah. 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 So after finishing giving the workers a big uh, lecture on the copper economy, I I say, well, uh, I have some friends and. What I what I'd like to do is is pay you to flirt with them, make their day, you know, some flirtation. Just not, you know, just let them think that you're interested. Without yeah, do sugar. Your professional status, you know, just some flirtation. Do you want the birthday package then? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's what we call sure the... I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds perfect. Well, we also call it the, the true romance package. You know, you hire me and I'll go and flirt with someone on their birthday, pretend to be in the things they're into, maybe go watch some kung fu plays, stay up late, have a good time, and they're none the wiser. That sounds perfect. Mm-hmm. Do you it's need an Elvis impersonator, impersonator too? 
because I have one on hand. I don't think so. Not this time, but we'll see. We'll keep that in mind. All right, so the two of you, uh, two of my friends shall be hanging out and, and uh, you know, I would just like you to kind of surprise them. Well, I'm Debbie and that's Steffi and uh, we'll be your friends today. And what do we call Perfect. you? My name is Olin. Olin. Okay. And um, so I'm going to try to be, you know, again, trying try to get them to sort of get fully invested in this. Well, first I'm offering them, I think the, I'm guessing 100 copper each is, is a ridiculously good price for this. Yes, that's a, you're paying them quite well. Yes. Yes. All right, and I'm gonna try to, you know, be very friendly, chat, you know, chatter with them, laugh at everything they're doing, or uh-huh. saying, uh, find them very witty to kind of further bind them as we walk. We're not walking directly up to the palace, just sort of up to a side street, and then over towards the gate. Right, you're strolling through the town. Yeah, in the right yeah. direction. Uh, why don't you give me one of your famous charisma checks to see how well you're actually bonding with them. Of course, you're, right. you're, it's going to appear that you're bonding with them very well because they're professionals. Okay, um, persuasion? Yeah. Oh, you know what? They're actually having a good time. It is the true romance package here. You really are enjoying their company, and they truly are enjoying yours as well. You might almost hate to use them in this way because they might suffer horribly because of it, and they're such... They're such great ladies. You know? I don't think the guards are going to want to um, turn them in, because then the guards have to admit that they were busy flirting. I'm just saying. They're guarding. It's always the, uh, the tools that you use that suffer in the end. It's always the little folk and never the brass. Anywho. Anyhow, so as we start to get up closer, I I say now there, those are my friends over there by the the gate that I would like you to make their day much more interesting. Uh, again, don't don't tell them my name. It's to be a surprise. Uh, they give a bit of a giggle and ask how you know your friends and what their names are. I'm gonna ignore the um, the names while going. You know, I'll, I'll make up some story about how, you know, we used to, uh, you know, we grew up in uh, the old neighborhood together, and they're always um, bragging about how they're just like the perfect. You know, we, we keep bragging about our jobs and that, you know, they say they're just the perfect guards and no one, nothing could possibly extract them. No one could ever get by that. Well, you know, never do. And I was just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We'll put that to use, test, they say. And your two courtesans, uh, working girls, uh, approach the pair of guards at the gate. What are you doing while they're approaching? Where are you I'm out? gonna duck around like a block, move, I guess, if it's, assuming that this is where the gate is, mm-hmm. kind of like go around a block, cross that main way going north, go around the block to the north, and then I'm gonna approach from the north, and I'm just gonna look like a tired, uh, you know, worker, I've got my shovel. Mm-hmm. Um, and do they seem to be distracted? Uh, well, let's find out. Our girls are hard at work here. And let's give our guards uh, a check here. What do they roll? They're going to pull um, an insight check. See if they catch what's going on. I'm just going to do one insight check for the two of them. Now, uh, when you're considering the DC of this insight check, I want you to think about every man you ever met. Yeah. And how many of them, when 
an attractive woman has come up and started flirting with them have gone, you know, I bet I'm not this naturally charming. I bet these this beautiful woman just didn't think I was amazing. This might be a trick. Versus the ones that said, oh, I got it. I'm gonna tell the guys about this tonight. Uh, yeah, that is, I mean, everyone likes to be flattered and rarely do people expect flattery to be treachery. But this is one of those, um, you know, are they totally distracted by this and just like oblivious to everything that's going on? Or are they like enjoying this conversation and be like, hold on, hold on. Uh, you, gar sir, come on, let's deal with this. And then going back to, you know, how distracted well, effectively well, to, to be are they? honest, I mean, let, let's, let's think about this, Neil. Yeah. So in the three years before you, you uh, met your wife, Yes. Did you suspect that I had paid any of those women to flirt with you? What women? They took your money and <laughs> ran, Rob. <laughs> they just they just left with everything. Um so the, the guards do pretty well on their insight check. They are absolutely enjoying their conversation, but they're not um What's the phrase? There's not a phrase for this. They are not like so distracted as to be ignoring their posts, but they are definitely involved in conversation at this point. All right. It's about, I guess it's been about 30 minutes at this point, probably for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I'll wait the 30 minutes for the next cart. Yep. Some time passes and uh, the ladies are out there with the guards and they they're all seem to be having a good time. There's lots of giggles and laughter and jokes coming that you can overhear. And eventually one of those carts full of refuse is being trucked out of the estate. Trying to be good, not just kill a random worker and take this car. So hard not to just murder. In well, it's like it's like yeah, it's like what we said. You know, once once you've you know, in for penny, in for pound. Uh, mm-hmm. In for a one hundredth of a copper, in for a gold. Yeah. So I will. Seeing the case, how many workers does it look like there are? Is there an um, is there just like ten? Are there like dozens and they wouldn't all know each other? Uh, from judging from the outside, there seem to be about seven or eight outside workers, but you do see people bringing stuff from the inside out as well. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time judging the number of workers on the inside because it's like a three-story palace. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's as many outside as there are in, we're probably in the dozen range. Do I, have I seen servants or stuff? I mean, I, I would really hate to infiltrate this palace and find out he's not even staying here during the renovation. He's staying at the spare room in his friend's condo. You do see what looks to be the head butler uh, pretty angrily yelling at one of the servants who is bringing, uh, one of the workers who's bringing out a broken vase. You know, walking head down, carrying the broken vase as the butler walks behind. You can't hear the words, but there's finger wagging and rah, 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 rah. And the, the worker is very bashful and embarrassed. Um... How far away is that? Uh, let's see. If you were to be standing here, you would see they're coming down through the the doorways. Whoops, that's not what we're looking for. Um, over here. Right. So, what is that distance? Sixty, seventy feet from me. All right. These these guards are still pretty. Yeah, they're involved in the conversation. The, the ladies. All right. I'm. Ah, screw it. Let's see what I can do here. 
I'm gonna uh, start like walking up here and then, you know, while looking, seeing the argument going on there, start to look a bit indignant and a bit, you know, a bit ticked off and I'm gonna stride purposefully through the gate you know, right. as if I'm about to give the butler a piece of my mind. Okay, give me your, give me a flat deception check just for how much you can own the role and belong in that place. All right. Ooh, it's okay. Um, you definitely look the part, you're definitely acting the part, but the guards do stop you. Um, you can hear the the one of the guards is telling a, a joke to these two other to the two ladies about a talent agent and this family that's come in with a, an act that they're going to perform for the talent agent. And hold on, hold on, and we're just getting to the good parts. Uh, excuse me, workman. Hold on, hold on. Um, who are you? I look over. I say, I'm I'm Michael, and that that jumped up fop is all over my boy. Jumped up. Oh, I don't recognize you. Are you on the list? And he reaches around. I said, I've only up. been working for a week here on on uh, redoing the cabinetry. Guard sort of rolls his eyes. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't recognize you. Hold on. Let me. Hey, you get over here. He starts calling to one of the, the workmen. Is this one of your guys? Uh, and one of the workmen sort of looks up tiredly, mops the brow, the uh, sweat off his brow, and starts heading in your direction, sort of tiredly. And I give him a little wave. Okay. You've got just a few moments before he arrives. Any any last minute plans? Um. I'm just gonna try to BS my way through this here. All right. The laborer shows up, uh, kind of walks over to where the guards are and says this, looks at you, shakes his head and goes, no, I don't, I don't recognize him. <sighs> Been working on the cabinets. Gives a shrug. Anything else you need? And the guards shake their head and tell him to go back and he goes back to work and the guards right. like- I, I just look just ridiculously annoyed here. Do you have a pass? Look, no one gets into the, the palace that doesn't get through us first, so. Why don't you just turn around and go find the foreman or something and sort it all out with them? Anyway, ladies, so I, it's this yeah, family, I, right? Yeah, I, I walk off like I can't believe this here. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go around to the north and I want to examine the walls, looking for places that it might be possible to go over. Yeah, there are plenty of places that you could climb the walls here. Uh, in fact, it probably wouldn't places even be that hard. That would not be super visible or noticeable. Mm, that is gonna be a bit of a problem. As we mentioned before, this is the palace on the hill near the south center of town. Uh, the outer walls are highly visible, like everything. Everyone. All right. I guess it's a bad day to be a cart driver. Um, I'm going to go look for, so there needs to be a cart. I still have to wait for a cart to all right, I'm gonna go position myself so that I can um, uh, observe carts leaving. All right. You give it a little bit more time and another cart uh, does leave the compound, but now it's been, uh, it's been over an hour since you've got to town here, or you, since you got to the palace and uh, your time is being eaten up. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I got to do here. I, yeah. I tried two gambits and they didn't work. 
Yeah, the sun is coming down. Uh, but as you are seeing this cart leaving, you notice that the butler comes over and starts talking to the guards and the lovely courtesans that you've hired are asked politely to leave and stop distracting the men from their work. Uh, they smile and wave and head out. I, I'm listening to the butler's voice. It's sort of a slow, droning, baritone voice with great indignity in it at all points in time. Like, he can't believe that he has to deal with such people of low intellect and moral standard. You're a, a drooper guard here. You can't be just talking with ladies of the night out in front of the palace while on duty in broad daylight. I'll have your pay Dr. Week for this. All right, so I'm memorizing his voice, his little mannerisms and things like that for imitation later. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm waiting for um, the cart. The cart yeah. rolls on out. Yep. All right. I'll follow along at a distance. Sure. It starts heading. Uh, where would you take a bunch of refuse? Uh, it starts heading for the uh, edge of the the palace, the, not the palace, the city, because High Castle, if we remember, is built on top of this cliff, and there's a sheer drop, and then down below is the docks, and that's where a couple of other people, unfortunately, met their ends. Uh, one of the ways that they deal with their trash here is they go to a certain section of the, the cliff and just throw everything off and into the ocean down below. You know, on the other side of where the docks are so that you don't hit people. It's sort of the, the dumping right. grounds. So the, the cart is getting rolled on over towards the, the cliff side to be uh, emptied into the canal. All right. Um, I mean, I'm assuming this is just, there's not really like a giant crowd of people for this. It's just people come over no. and dump stuff whenever. Yeah. All right. All right, I'm gonna um, walk on up to the uh, as he's dumping the stuff. Mm -hmm. And I call him. Um, I'm you know taking a look around to see how deserted everything is. You know, make sure there's no witnesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, there's like a kid playing with a dog maybe a hundred feet away, but he's not paying attention. All right, so I'm gonna get the, um, can I position the cart so it's between us and the kid? Yeah, you can walk to the other side of the cart and it'll work for now. All right, I look tired and call over to the uh, the peasant. I wanna look, get him over to the other side of the cart where the kid can't see. He stops his work before he dumps everything and leans heavily on the cart and says, What do you want? They sent me to help you out. Who? I said that one with the mustache. And I said to give you this. And I, like, grab my pouch and hold it up. He takes a few steps forward and, like, holds out his hand to take the pouch and looks very curiously at it, what it might be. All right. Um, I'm going to brass knuckle assassination him on the side of the head because I don't want to get blood all over his clothes. So as he goes to take the pouch, the right hand just comes up and knocks him on the side of the face. Yes. Give me a roll to hit. I think we were just using dagger for that, except that it's blunt instead of pierce. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Oh, oh dear God! My God! Well, he's AC ten. I guess he could have bad dexterity. He could have bad dexterity. We're gonna have to roll his dexterity, though. Yes. Um. Average dexterity. Oh God! Have one, one less, one less. You know, than I it's every done. time you try and kill an innocent peasant, shit goes awry. Which would imply that, that cow had it coming. <laughs> yeah. Um, well. Yeah, that cow had been hanging out with the manta rays. It knows what it did. 
Let. Ma what's wrong with the manta rays? They're so wonderful. Uh, well, we need we need to roll for initiative now. Uh, the guard or the peasant is gonna roll a flat d twenty. They have initiative eighteen. Oh dear lord. <laughs> oh, you barely beat them. All right, you go first. All right. Has it just how like can I, How can I freaking miss? Ha! Ah, finally. You stab him. He's no longer surprised. Um, so you I don't just have, have to act before his first um, initiative to still get the assassination. Oh, is that it? Yes. Sure, then he's definitely. Who hasn't taken an action in combat yet. Does you get advantage on or critical hits on? Starting third level, you are at your deadliest when you get the drop on your enemies. You have advantage on attack rolls against any creature that hasn't taken a turn in combat yet. Okay, and cool. You hit, you score as critical against that creature. But really, it's about the... Yeah, the, so the sneak attack. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's going to be D4 plus 4 plus many D6s. Uh, it's a crit, one, so it's what, 2D4? It's not a crit. It is a the assassination is a crit. In addition, any crit. hit you score against a creature that is surprised is a critical hit, and you have lost surprise. Oh, all right. Um, D4 plus four plus, I want to say it's like five, four D6? Five D6? What is your sneak attack damage these days? Uh, yeah, I forget. It's something good. It's, it's something, I mean, this poor sucker's got like eight HP, right? So... 4d6. I'm double 46. Yeah, he can't survive this base damage. He's definitely dead. All right, do you, do you want the roll or? Just for funsies. Plus 4d6. The 17 yeah. point punch to the side of the head. So he gives a, a short scream as you swing, throw your first punch, drops the bag, and before he can really do anything else. The second one comes in right to the side of the temple, cracks his head open, and he slumps to the ground, falling All behind right. the cart. The, the so kid looks up. The, before the kid can uh, like really do anything, I'm on the side of the, I'm on the other side of the cart, and I I, I left the shovel down and I kind of hop out like, ah, God, my foot. Ah, I'm imitating the guy's voice as best I can, the actor. And I like lean against the back of the cart and rub my foot. All right. Uh, the kid looks I over at you. Drop that. Ugh. Yeah. The small child watches you for a minute uh, in amusement that you've injured yourself, laughing to himself, uh, and then goes back to playing with the dog. All right. So I'm going to. Um, I made sure not to get this guy's clothes bloody. Uh, get his exact clothes. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. uh, dump the refuse over the side. Is there is there anything like a little ledge or something that like it's a little bit down the side that I could put the body so it doesn't roll all the way down? No, it is a sheer plate. drop all the way like 200 feet to the water below. Well, that seems geographically unlikely, or geologically unlikely, but okay. Yes, it is geologically unlikely, um, but that is what happens when the gods bring down their wrath on Arcadia and break open the continent, creating sheer cliffs that used to be the middle of the continent. Oh, gods don't exist any more than dragons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've killed the old man, the middle-aged man. You've taken his clothes? You, yeah. I'm are gonna, you changing right here in the middle of the road? Well, it's not really the middle of the road. I, I guess I was it's assuming it's sort of outside of the, the yeah. Yeah. It's, it's outside of town, and then I've got, if I'm on the other side of the cart, that I'm fairly. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. So I'll change one. I won't like strip naked at the end. I'll change one item at a time. It's just. <laughs> All right. You change clothes. 
No one seems to be any the wiser. You throw the body and all the rest of the refuse in the wheelbarrow off the cliff. Um, I'm gonna look around. Is there a place up on top here of the cliff that a body could be stashed and probably not be found for a few days? No, definitely not. Um, I'm this... sure the body's just gonna end up washing into the uh, the docks, and then word will spread or whatever. I'm gonna put my old clothes on his body. So okay. there's not a naked body. Sure. Um, there's nowhere even like nothing that's hundred like... yards away where there's some trees or something. No, because it's still within the city limits. And if this weren't a sheer cliff, there would probably be a, a wall here. But since it's a sheer cliff, no one bothered to build a wall. And since there's no safety regulations, no one bothered to even build a fence along the cliff side. So it's just a spot. There's like a building nearby and there's like a different building over here that it looks like maybe it's a um a, a leather workers shop and he's got all these hides stretched out over it but clearly the leather worker's not outside right now maybe inside having dinner because it's getting kind of late you know so you could like store the body in the leather worker shop but they're gonna find it tomorrow at the very latest you know or the other building you're not sure what it is and there's sort of an alley behind it but there's also like a bunch of firewood back there so someone's probably gonna go get some firewood today or tomorrow and it's a city there's not a lot of places that go unobserved in your immediate vicinity all right um i'm gonna pull the cart up to an alley mm -hmm alley you just mentioned mm -hmm. and when I the, the coast is clear I'll move the body and I'll act like he's my drunk pal kind of thing move him into the alley mm -hmm. um, I am going to kind of have him like you know sitting slumped so that the smashed part of his head is hidden uh, um, in fact I've got various disguises I'll put a hood on him um, so that you don't see the smash part at all. And I'm gonna lay my wine skin uh, across his his belly. Sure. With you know his hands on it there. So he just like he got drunk and passed out. Yeah. Um, That'll probably keep for a few hours. Well, I mean, who goes around really talking to passed out drunk people in alleys. Who knows? I mean, it could go days, but I wouldn't count on it, you know? Someone might come and be like, oh, he's drunk, I'm gonna steal his shit, and then he finds out he's dead, or maybe yell at him for sleeping in the alleyway. Like, anything could happen, you know? It's a big, wide, crazy world. Um, and he is a dead man in civilization. They, they tend to go noticed. Does he that's, have a... Um, that's a thing. Do you have a mustache, beard, anything like that? Uh, it's got like a two-day growth of facial hair, maybe maybe a five-day growth of facial hair. Um, nothing else particularly. All right, um, I'm gonna with my disguise kit disguise myself as him as best I can. I'll mm -hmm. shave down to a growth. Uh, I'm wearing his clothes. I, again, I you know whatever this pass is, I'm going to get the take the pass. I mean, I've got a disguise kit, which is what it's. This is basically what it's supposed to be for. Right. So your your disguise kit, you'll have like you'll have to shave down your beard, and then you can apply like the fake beard to your face, uh, and that'll. Well, hold. I'm figuring. I'm, I'm just trying to get a stubble effect, like he's. Mm -hmm. Right. right. So I'm just trying to shave down to stubble. You can't and shave then... down to stubble without an electric razor. You got to scrape the skin. You can't just like trim a beard down to like a, a semi beard with a, a straight razor. It's not possible. It is with a magic dagger. <laughs> <laughs> a magic dagger of like carefully manicured beard. Put the put the dagger on like the five day beard setting, or put it on like the one magic setting. dagger. Miami Vice. So I can perpetually have five o'clock shadow. <laughs> You've got a fake. Beard. Are you telling me there's not some nobles that have magic daggers that give them constant five o'clock shadow when they shave? 
it's a specialty magical item. They are shears of douchey grooming, is what they're called. Um, but you don't have those. <laughs> so you have a fake beard you can glue on your face. Well, I'm just trying to duplicate this guy as best I Yeah, can. that's fine. You, you've done a good job. We'll roll some checks in a little bit when we come back from our break, because it is time right. for our first break here on Assassin. Uh, we have two hours left in which to kill Count Drooper, uh, after which word will arrive that his son is dead and the captain of his household guard and long time family confidant uh, are both missing and security will go way up. So we will see you on the other side of a break. Bye.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Assassin. All right. You've murdered an innocent, middle-aged man. He knows what he did. I'm beginning to think those mana rays are pretty innocent, after all. Oh, no, they, they were... They orchestrated this whole thing. You're wearing his clothes. You've disguised yourself as him as best as you can. And uh, as you're reaching around in his clothes, you pull out a small wooden, uh, it's like a hall pass that you might have had in high school or something, right? It's like a, a small awkwardly pe uh, awkward piece of wood with some carvings in it that look very similar to the Drooper family sigil with a little bit of paint tossed in there to make it like unique enough that no one's gonna have this except for the people who it gets passed out to, but also not like expensive and can easily be just like chucked and replaced the next time they need workers to come by and, you know, come up with new version of the same thing. Um, oh, see, that's, that's amateur hour hall pass one. You, you wanna cut down on trips to the bathroom during your class, you make, you buy a wooden toilet seat and you paint hall pass I have to go potty on it with your room number. <laughs> and students have to take that if they want to go to the bathroom during your class. Oh, yeah. I and suddenly a, they don't really need to as much. I had a government profess teacher in high school who had really large, awkward hall passes that he would hand out. They were just like big, clunky metal things that you'd have to carry around. I don't remember what they were, but yeah, very effective. Uh, so you get back to the palace gates, the courtesan, that's actually not the right word. The street walkers are no longer there. Um, and you've got a cart with you now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to roll on up, you know, kind of have my head down in a tired way. And I'm kind of looking forward, like someone in the middle of his shift at work, mm -hmm. doing physical mm -hmm. labor. The guards look you over. Give me a second deception check. Now that you've got like the whole outfit going on, this time with advantage. All right. I've been doing so badly on these rolls. You're bound to get a good one eventually. <laughs> they stop you. <clears throat> mm hmm. Sir, your pass. I, I get out the pass and I and I'll again I've got the actor feed I can imitate some mm -hmm. voice. No, you the moment you bring it out and wave it, they're like, all right, go on through, okay. and just file you in. And uh, <coughs> you are now on the ground floor of the estate. You've passed the outer layer of security. Now you still don't know where your enemy is. Um, you know that he is definitely probably, I mean, probably guarded. You know, there's lots of guards around, but no one's necessarily on high alert. And there are a few unknown people walking about. Uh, you have a dagger on you, which is not unusual for a manual laborer at this point in time. And in this daggers, place, I mean. many daggers. Uh, I think maybe your back dagger you might have to move or get rid of because you're no longer wearing a cloak. Yeah, so I'll have, have that just inside my, my shirt in here. Okay. Wraps tight to my body. Basically, I have a cloth wrapped around under my shirt with the dagger tucked in. And where are your brass knuckles? Because you certainly very... can't carry those around. I'll just have those in my pocket. Okay. They have pockets? Are you sure the pocket was invented back then? Just kidding, Just kidding. Um, here you are. All right. Uh, first, is it clear where the cart is supposed to go? Where did I see them loading up before? Uh, the cart had just been like in this area. It was just a dumping ground for stuff. All right. I'll put the cart where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna have my uh, my head down. You know, again, not like you know, but just tired laborer. Yeah. Look, yeah. All right. 
So I'm a purist. Um. Uh, now door. What now? Is there stuff that's being carried out? Is there like a refuse pile here? That's the cart. Cart is the refuse pile. But but has more refuse piled up while I was while this was being dumped. There's a small amount that has piled up on the the steps and around here. Not a lot, you know. Without uh, power tools, everything has to be taken down by hand, and it doesn't look like they're wrecking walls anymore. It's more of like, well, this got accidentally got broke, and these tiles need to be replaced, and so it's little bits that are coming in and out. You know, it's not a, a whole big heap. All right. So looking for a piece that clearly came from inside, you know, like some piece of cabinet or mm -hmm. something, some interior refuse. There is a, a cabinet door that has a crack on it. You know, it looks like someone was carving some sort of figurine into it and something uh -huh. happened and the, the uh, chisel split the whole cabinet door and it's been chucked out here. All right, that actually is perfect. I'll. Grab that. Uh, what's the security situation looking like up here? Do I, I don't see any guards. Uh, no. To your bottom left uh, is a walkway into what looks probably like a guardhouse. You know, these are the the turrets on the building over here. On the um, all of this inside is like nice walls. This out here is like hard. I shouldn't say hard stone. Um, uh, large stone from like castle fortifications. While this is like. A wood walled section and this is like nice marble over here um you see no guards the stuff this down moment? below is marble uh yeah let's see actually the this is a a wooden wall but you can see through the windows like marbled interiors and this up here is also a wooden wall uh and there are marble and like nice interiors within here uh, you, there's a window right there into a storeroom. All right. Storeroom is not what, uh, where I'm going to find the count. Um, I am looking for So to the building to the north or the south. Either of them have chimneys. Look, do they look like they might be? Basically, I'm looking for where the count might be staying during this whole process. And I'm going to start loading some very, you know, you know, slowly, um, tiredly, taking my time, the other refuse aside from that uh, cabinet door uh, into the cart. There are many chimneys. While I investigate. And I'm also paying, well, some that are emitting smoke. I'm looking for signs of the Duke's presence or the Count's presence, particularly the butler or like, you know, fancy-ish looking servants. Um, and I'm also listening for any names being said by the workman. Okay. Uh, well, you're standing here right now. You see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chimneys scattered throughout the, uh, the, the estate. None of them seem to be smoking presently. Um, All right. You overhear no names as of yet. The guards are quietly talking amongst themselves. The other laborers are quietly going around their work. Uh, the butler is probably still yelling at that poor craftsman somewhere inside now. Um, but you are standing I, about- I hear that. No, I mean, probably. You, you know, butler doing his job probably somewhere, but you can't, can't overhear it. All right. Their assumptions we're making. All right, I'm going to, uh, um, if I haven't picked up any names or anything yet, I'm going to grab the um, the cabinet door. Mm -hmm. And I assume it came out of here, this building. Sure. Um, that seems to be the building that everything's coming from. It's, yep, that, that is the front door that you can walk through. All right. Into... What do I see going on in here? Well, this is what the, this is the courtroom. Um, there's this raised section over here where the count might hold court or deal with any issues that might be happening. Happening, And then here's the nice area for all of his uh, low, lowly subjects to stand and watch and, and be impressed as the count administers justice and solves people's problems and throws parties and makes proclamations. 
are there people working in here? Do I hear workers there in is, other parts? Uh, there is a single craftsman who is, you can see through this doorway up into the, the north, north right. Um, he's on the other side in what looks to be a small temple um, to Astaire, the god of law and order in here. Uh, and he's working on, you know, fixing something that's wrong with the statue. You know, the, the toenails aren't quite right. So he's, you know, carving out cuticles on them. All right. Um, um, this stair goes up. Sorry, this goes up to this platform. This goes up to the second floor. This goes up to a platform and this goes up to the second floor as well. All right. Do I hear any other work or were people talking anywhere else? Give me a perception check. Absolutely. You can hear the sounds of work being done up, upstairs. Oh god, the hiccups live. Oh no, the worst. Uh, there's work being done upstairs. There's work being done over here in this room. Uh, and there's a nagging voice. Uh, a masculine nagging voice coming from upstairs somewhere. You can't quite make out the words, but it has that tone to it. That tone that we all know so well. All right, but nothing to the south here right now. No, south side seems to be calm and quiet. All right, I'm gonna walk purposefully over to the south. Oh, there's not much going on over here. No, small room, fireplace, no activities. Also fairly barren. Looks like it hasn't been redecorated after the renovation. All right. Um, but there's plenty of windows, it looks like. Lots of windows. Uh, these windows look outside and they are decoratively barred in a combination. You can't break this window and slip through. And also now there's pretty glass in between. So it's not quite like a stained glass setup, but it's, you know, little circle here, radius here, this thingy over there. Oh, look, this metal is in the shape of a unicorn, you know? Can't go through the windows, but they're pretty. And you can That's look fine. through them. Can I see through them well enough? Yeah. You can All see right. the city below. If I um, am not directly, I'm assuming with bars and with windows and with glass, if I'm not like directly face pushed up against the window, if I'm standing, few feet back from the window, mm -hmm. I'm probably not visible to someone outside. Yeah, they would have to make a concerted effort to see you. Given that there's no l real light going on aside from what's coming in from the window. Right, right. They'd have All to right. be right up to it to see you. All right, so from here, I'm going to try to observe the south building, the south marble, you know, wooden marble building. And I'm trying to determine if there's um, uh any habitation going on in that building, if that's um, like... Well, this window looks out of the palace grounds onto the city below. Like, you know, because this is sort of on a hill, so city around you. You'd be looking into but a building. Wouldn't these windows look over at that wooden building? Oh, these are not... Oh, these to the sides are not windows. These are just alcoves. There is a, a door uh, right here that leads into that wooden building you were looking for. Yeah, okay. the door might be a little uh, hard to spot on your version of the map. Okay, yeah, I thought it was just a little alcove. Um, can I go through that door? You can. Whoop. Um, and as you go through the door, you can... Ooh, that should have been wall of sight blocked off. I guess that door is open right now. You can see yeah. into a guard hall um, across the way. Over here, right. whoops, uh, over here is where a couple of guards are sitting at a table having lunch, leaving the door open. All right, what, um, dinner. I've seen having a few dinner. guards now. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we talking about as far as their helmets? How face obscuring are they? Are we talking like kinds of helmets the star of the fantasy movie would be wearing or the types of helmets well the, the star of the, the fantasy movie face. doesn't wear a helmet because they're impervious to any sort of harm true um 
But, but you know I, how how a lot of fantasy minions have face obscuring helmets, so we don't feel bad when they get mowed down by the dozens. We don't think like that guy had a family when you know the hero kills him. Uh, I'm trying to get the right name for this. They are uh, bassinet helmets without a face, please. So from straightforward, you can totally make out their facial features, but from sides or back, not at all. Okay. Um, think the helmets of the Frenchmen in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. All right. So, debating whether to get, whether to acquire some guard equipment. Now, <clears throat> I'm assuming that would be fairly difficult. Well, you're standing there on the platform, taking a look around. Uh, one of the guards kind of leans over to look at you with a quizzical, quizzical gaze, because you're just standing there on that. Ledge. Okay, I I make a show of like I'm looking around for somebody, mm -hmm. and just to get a, a sight, I kind of like walk reluctantly over there. Oi. Um, I go, uh, you know where the butler is right now? Upstairs? Go ask him something. Okay. Probably second or third floor. All right. No. So I'm trying to make them, I'm guessing that workmen don't like to talk to the butler. Yeah. Then I'll start heading back out. Yeah. The guards continue to munch on their food. Uh, you're getting towards, it's getting kind of late. You know, it's been half an hour since we last checked in with the time, since you dumped the body, uh, and it is definitely evening now. All right. I haven't seen any servants at all, huh? Um, no. No, you well, haven't I, seen any servants down here on the ground floor. Actually, in that other room before I leave, mm -hmm. at, at these similar windows over here, Yes. Did those look out at the other building? This looks back out into that main courtyard that you were in. You're in the, I think you're in the building, the southern building oh, that you were talking oh, okay. about. Right? You are. Oh, okay. That is that building. All right. Never mind then. It was all. Okay. So I'm going to go back out. Uh, back into the main thing there. I need to start running into servants. To know that I'm getting to the right place. They're not down here on the ground floor, not during all this work. Yeah. Well, I figured they might not want to be in the building at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe they are. So I'm going to go up to the second floor again, striding with, with purpose, with uh, holding that um, wooden door, which can be used if need be, as I'm carrying it to like, oh, it just happens to be obscuring my face, but how else would you carry this big cabinet door? So that's not suspicious at all. Right, right. Uh, here you come up the second, up the stairs to the second floor. There's a balcony that looks down to where the Count would give court below. And there's also like a nice hall up here where you could throw a party. There's a balcony that you can see. Um, and then the the north and south wings are visible as well. No one has clearly left a door open to the top, though. All right. Uh, no signs of servants yet? Uh, no, but you definitely hear the sounds of an angry butler coming from this stairway. Whoops. Third floor? This stairway, yeah, up on the third floor. All right. Um... I'm gonna go take a peek over there. Nice long decorative hall with windows that look out into the courtyard and- Still uh, no sign of servants? Still no sign of servants. Is there sound of work going on on this floor? No. Is there sound of footsteps up above? Uh, it wouldn't go through the hard floors in between these le levels. Okay. No. 
<sighs> what to do? What to do? Well, I've got a stupid plan, but it just might be the only plan, and it might work. Um, I'm going to go, again, carrying this door, mm -hmm. uh, heading up these stairs to the third floor. Okay. All that, perfect. Up to the third floor. And you find yourself facing two doors. Uh, one directly in front of you, and one to your left. Can I hear anything from beyond either door? Give me a perception check. All right. And in particular, trying to hear the butler. Uh... Oh, yeah. You hear the butler. He is on the other side of the door, and you can hear him saying, I'm <clears throat> terribly sorry, Master Drooper, but one of the workmen seems to have broken the vase uh, given to you by the late Lady Chrysanthemum. Uh, and you can hear the reply from Count Drooper saying, Lady Chrysant... Oh, the, the white one with the, the gold roots going throughout it. Butler says, yes, yes, my lord, I'm sorry, it's been broken. <sighs> well, I guess we can't have good work without breaking a few eggs or or something like that. Isn't there a, a peasant saying about eggs breaking and that being a good thing? Butler says, I wouldn't know, sir. I don't associate with them. But I thought you ought to know, since it was a, a prized piece. And the Count replies, yes, yes. Well... Brutish people, aren't they? Uh, how long until the, the renovations are done again, sir? Oh, d another two days. We should all be finished. Just the final touches being made. The count replies, right, right. Well. All right. So there's another door. So which door was that? Is that sound coming from? That's coming from the one directly in front of you. The, and the, the door, door left the is oh. quiet. Uh, can I take a peek in through that door then? Yeah, you can open the door and it peers out into a hallway. Okay. Oh, go. Um. Yeah, I do need to see if there's cards. You said the um, this building is three stories. You are on the third floor right now. And over to this way is like looking up over the cliffs. Uh, every way is looking out over the, you're on like the peak of a hill in the middle of town, right? So you're at the highest point. The town is below you all the way around. So from up here, you can uh -oh. see down and into the city. So the town is 360. There's not a side of the keep that's not visible by the town. Right. All right. Okay. I, I can't climb down the outside and peek in the window to look for uh, You hear the door open behind you, and then the door directly behind you open, and the butler tries to step through, looks at you and says, Oh, I get out of his way. What are you doing? A broken door. We don't need it up here. Take it down at once. Oh, well, they thought that maybe with some wood glue, we could... Wood? Wood, wood glue? Why? And he, like, grabs you by the ear and, like, physically starts to, like, haul you down the stairs by the ear. Wood glue? What sort of establishment okay, do you so think this is? This, I know you always wanted me to do the assessment. So with his grabbing, can I assess his combat skill? Uh, you can definitely assess his strength. Absolutely. Okay. Give me your insight check. All right. Well, I'm trying to get like, did he grab me as just like some oh, sort of intellectual person? Does he seem like he would have wrestling skill? No, he seems like he has a fairly low strength, uh, probably like 
10-ish. And uh, he's got only that plus, what is it, plus two to hit that you would get from being like zeroth level. Um, so he's definitely zeroth right. level butler with, you know, average strength. All right. Um, how far now? I noticed that the stairs were coming up from the south. Mm hmm so they must so this there must be like a bit of a staircase where the stairs turn because the stairs on the map below went to the south uh maybe let's oh god oh the, all the tiles are messed up everywhere let's head down a floor i think that the stairs go up this way oh okay yeah i think it's just not very clear on the map all right yeah. um and this was fairly deserted down here? Uh, it is. Well, until the, the butler comes down with you in tow, uh, holding you by the ear and ranting and raving at you for bringing it. What glue? What you, our standards are that low that we okay, could just so this have is a broken so thing? And here, nothing to see. And... Yeah. Empty. All right, so wait, wait, see. before we get there, there's we're, we're oh. going to act. So I'm... Uh, and... Uh -huh lift my fingers uh, into the um, uh, the brass knuckles and try to surprise, assassinate, clock him to the side of the head the way I did with the peasant. But hopefully hitting on the first try. Let's see. All right, here we go. Uh, there you go. You slam your brass knuckled fist right into the butler's head. Um, you can roll damage if you want, but he is dead. Okay, that's what I figured, that I could take him out if I, assuming I hit him. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, the big brass bit is well embedded in his skull. You actually have to, like, pry him off of it for a moment. Um, and he'll slump to the ground a bloody mess. All right, and darn, I really wanted to have a place like a hall or a closet to hide him in first. Um, looking around here, I know this is not an option. Do I see like what's over here? So that's just a... uh, got to walk around, move about. All right, so hmm, it's not letting me grab my character. Oh, what? Right, that's that's the butler. Never mind. No. <laughs> uh, so is this an alcove over here? Yeah, sort of alcovey. All right, what do I see to the north-ish? You'll have to go investigate. All right, uh, for now, I'm going to stick him in the alcove. Okay, so you slump the body right over here. I'm just taking a quick peek over up here to the north. Mm -hmm. What do I see in that room? It looks like some sort of... Uh, well, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff that's been piled in here, like other rooms have been renovated and they're like tossing, like putting bookcases in here and putting tables in here and chairs and candelabras. It looks like a temporary Perfect. storage for stuff. And no one's in here? Looks empty. Perfect. It's the perfect place to store a butler then. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put the butler in like be like hidden under like bookcases and stuff. Uh, where he can't be seen, and I'm going to strip him, like, um, can I close this door? Yes. All right, I close the door, uh, very quickly strip him, change into his clothes, and I'm going to at least, like, try to make it so that to if just somebody wasn't particularly looking at me, I they would think I'm the butler. I'm, you, you said, you know, like, uh, I guess you brought to mind the... Uh, I'm just guessing from that voice that he has like a big curly Q mustache and a trimmed little goatee and stuff that. How are you gonna get that though? You just shaved off all of your facial hair and glued on a fake beard. Do you have like a curly Q fake beard, fake mustache in your well, I assume disguise that's in kit? The, uh, I'm assuming that's in the disguise kit. One that looks just like his? You style it. Okay. So you dress in his clothes, you bring out the, the long mustache, trim it just I a little bit. I draw a mustache on my finger and go around like this. Um, nice. <laughs> like a Love sir. Um, uh, yeah, so okay. I'm just trying to get it so that it's cursory glance. Unless somebody is looking for him, I'm guessing people just see the outfit 
looks, you know, see, like, they're not, probably not specifically staring at him. I'm guessing he's not well liked by people here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As long as they don't go up and talk to people. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. I'll make rolls in secret. Uh, right. But he is, you know, a very important person in this household. Everyone and that Ad lives in the, the keep, in the palace, would be able to recognize him right away. Like, if someone showed up dressed as your daughter, you'd be able to spot them from a mile away as a fraud, right? If they were looking at my face, what I'm planning to do is I'm going to do a lot of butlery muttering in mm. his voice with actor. Mm. So it's a lot of what you see is just what your brain is filling in. Have you ever had that where something looked one way, but then as you started to like realize, oh, it's not that at all, then you, yeah. then like your brain sees the other details. Like, like yes. I remember looking at a couch and like being sure I saw like a panther or, or like a cheetah lying on it. And then like my brain thought, why would a cheetah be lying on the couch? And I looked at it was just like this sort of spotted blanket, but my brain had filled in cheetah just because of the way it was like lying there until I processed and went, no, that can't be what it is. So what I'm guessing is, what I'm hoping is to put in enough detail that if somebody's not really looking at me, but if someone hears the voice, they go, oh God, it's the butler. And if they don't particularly like directly look at me. Sure, sure. And if you subscribe right now, you'll get more Tales from the 70s from Rob <laughs> right after this at break. Uh, actually, there's not a break right now. That's a... Anyway, Tales you're- Tales from the 70s. Well, I'm expecting like cheetah print leather couch or cheetah print blanket on a leather couch sounds like a tale from the 70s. And especially if yeah, you're mistaking you... it for an actual cheetah, then like there's there's got to be something going on. You, you keep it up, Neil, and I'll just like, you see whose face gets ground into my shag carpet. <laughs> All righty, Butler Rob. We're going to give you the Butler token to walk around in as now. All right. Um, let me assign it to you so you can control it. All right, you can now control the butler. He is you. Right. You are him. Okay, out I oh, go. You can't see as the butler, though, so let me give you vision. No? All right, yeah, I've got vision. Okay, okay. cool. I don't have vision, though. I... I, I need vision. I'm gonna, um... There we go, okay, I have vision now. You're gonna go? I'm gonna go back up to the third floor. All righty, let me bring you to the third floor. <sighs> All right. So we're back, we're back on the second floor. I'm assuming it looks like it went went out to. I just I just got to check my escape route here. So back on the second floor. I don't want to make assumptions. I was making an assumption. I realized that would be stupid. It looks like the floor where everything was being. Oh, it looks like I was wrong. Okay, the floor where. Hmm letting me get in that room. Oh, Ooh. yeah, I have to drag you through the walls. All right, so everything is all windows, like actual glass windows. Glass windows with bars to prevent uh, people from getting in. It's, you know, a palace in the middle of the city, so it's got to be... Um, all entrances and exits must be covered with bars or soldiers to prevent theft. All right. Can I see out that? Is that a window? Is that a door? Uh, that is a door to your left. I'll go through okay. it. I will. I will open it and look through it with my head down a little bit. Uh, it looks like a uh, weapon room. It looks like a, one of those turrets on the very front of the uh, estate with a bed here for whatever guard pair is on duty and a weapon rack and uh, stairs leading up to the third floor of the turret and down to the first floor of the turret. All right. Um, I guess my escape route will be the front. 
Um, okay, so back down, or, or back, it's not letting me through there. Uh, we'll go back to the third floor. After all the careful planning that I've done through so many episodes, we're just going balls out here. All right, you make it back over and up to the third floor. Here you are. All right, up to the door. Um, I'm gonna open it and I'm going to be like sort of looking, I wanna kind of look back waving my hand in an exasperated manner, just take a quick glance in um, to see if there are guards or anything. But I'm at, gonna act and go, oh, as if the face wasn't enough. Oh. And again, using the um, the butler's voice to try to create the illusion so that just with a quick, quick glance. You step in and did, there did is the Count the... Drooper sitting on a bed who looks up as his door open, opens. Yeah, and I quickly am like you... looking back before he like really registered, but I'm using the butler's voice going, as if the face wasn't enough, Lady Chrysanthemum. Well, and I'm looking back. Give me a deception check. All right. Does he really have reason to suspect his butler? Abs he knows his butler his whole life. Any He's hearing the slight... voice. Uh, any slight deviation is going to be a bit of a surprise to him. It, this is this is not. I mean, you've had like what uh, two minutes to dress yourself as the butler. Maybe one yeah, of the, the guards. Butler's actual clothes. Yeah, you're in the butler's actual clothes, but the face is totally it. wrong. But you I'm have facing the, the other direction. That's why I was like looking out the other direction as I'm cursing down the the stairs. And I'm trying to make the focus mainly the voice. Sure. Which as the actor, I took a whole feat to be able to do that one. Right. Mr. Crawley, what is it? It's like, oh, you'll never guess what these brutish workmen have done now. What? He's like, I've broken another vase. All right. And there's no sign of guards that I saw here? Uh, there's no other tokens in the room. Okay. Count Trooper uh, comes to stand around, before you. Yeah, so whip around and dagger attack. And we're going to leave right here and come back on the other side of our break with the last I segment of Assassin. Happen. Hey, Count Trooper.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Assassin the Butler. It's face to face with the Count, who is a little oddded out that the Butler hasn't been looking at him while he's walked into the Count's room because what Butler would ever hide his face from his Lord and Master? Um, uh, the Butler's trying to stab him in the neck. Butler trying to stab him in his neck. So I'm going to ask you to roll me initiative here because he is not caught. Totally by surprise. Uh, oh, that is better than he... Well, I haven't rolled this. He might... He would be hard... For, he'd have to have at least a 17 dex. He'd, no, have, to he'd have, have to have an 18 dex. He'd have to have 18 dex to beat that. To beat, yes. Um, so, unlikely. One in 216 chance. Close, but no cigar. Uh, you go first. Hold on, let me get some... Go. He sees you, is uh, not Woo! mechanically surprised, but is like shocked that there is a, a dagger or some brass a knuckles. A dagger with a 21. 
The dagger with the 21 hits the Lord Ard. Roll me damage. D4 oh, yeah, plus four. Uh, it's he has not had a turn in combat, so it is two d4 plus four. But it was not with advantage, so it is not. That's not um, sneak attack dice. No, no it's assassination. That you have advantage on a creature that hasn't taken a turn yet. So yes, you get all the things. It is two d4 plus eight d4 plus four. I'm sorry, 8d6. It is a million points of damage. It It's a lot. Oh my god, look at those rolls. Oh, there's a one. <laughs> yeah, there's a one next to all these other above average rolls. Wow, amazing. Uh, the dagger goes, I mean, why don't you give us the graphic details here? Where, where are you I, I sticking him? He's, well, it's, uh, I'm guessing that he wasn't a 10th level fighter, and this actually does. He's not a secret 10th level fighter. This okay. is lethal. How is it lethal? Um, I'm going to jam the dagger perfectly up his under like the soft spot up here. There's no bone protecting up into his brain. All right, it goes up into and the, the give Lord. A twist. Gives a twist. He clatters backwards onto that table right behind him, falls to the side, hitting that chair that's tucked into the table on the map, uh, clashes to the ground with a. Oh! Well, I kind of want to hold him. And well, let him that was not I part of the description. That was one right. of the reasons I asked for a description. Let's see what was and wasn't done. All right, I'll grab the dagger, I'll pull the dagger out, wipe it. Um, what kind of fires do we have up here? You know what? Actually, if the butler is gone and he's gone, no one could discover this body for a long time. Because who else but the butler is gonna go up in here? Not like he has a son that's going to show up for a visit. Right. So what are you doing? Um, I am going to... Is, does he have a key? What does he have on him? Well, what, you what's... start going through his stuff then, you know, looking for keys. Like, I'm just very uh, quickly looking for the key yeah. to this door. Uh, it's as you're searching his body and looking for the key, the door behind you opens, and in through it, steps a dwarf. Um, this looks similar to the dwarf you've met before, uh, but younger, definitely doesn't have the mithril plate mail, uh, and has a battle axe with him that is drawn, and uh, he threw open that door and he's looking around, and he looks down and sees Count Drooper dead at your feet. you so locking the door. So much for locking the door. Where was this door that he just came through? The, he came through the side door that you'd come through. Remember this door? Oh, that door. Into that hallway? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant he had like another door in this chamber. No, 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 no. He's he's come through the, the side door over this way. All right. Yep. I'm going to... to um... roll initiative. Because we are in a real pickle now. Um, our initiative button for our young Ulin Furin, the the son of Olin Furin. Not quite the fighter his father is, but uh, definitely standing here with a battle axe, ready to take on the murderer of his lord. You go first, Butler. All right. I. Can I put, can I, if I take the opportunity to attack, up, well, I guess I can use my um, cunning action to disengage. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to go through? You cannot square, move through his square. The, um, 
You cannot move through his square. You could maybe do a, if you shove him to the ground, you could walk over him and past him. You'd have to use your action to shove him and knock him prone. All right, I am going to um, disengage. Mm -hmm. Action. Disengaged? Yes, move back here. Um, with my dagger ready, my other hand, um, I'm like, I'm moving the dagger to draw his attention and sneering at him while well, my other hand goes um, my pouch to grasp the um, invisibility potion to mm. uh, be ready with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to uh, ready an action so that my, so my action is going to be ready so that um, when he charges at me, I'm going to drink the invisibility. Okay. And... I say I killed your father. You're going to be easy pickings. <laughs> Ulin steps forward into the doorway, looks down at the Count to see if maybe somehow he's alive, but the rapidly expanding pool of blood tells him otherwise and shouts over his shoulder, Guards! Assassin! He doesn't charge at me to avenge his father? Uh, he's taken stock of the situation to begin with. Um, and then he steps into the doorway and will he close bang, I say the he door. He for his life. Lies! Lies! He cried. My father would never cry. He's a dwarf. We bury our emotions so deep down, not even a miner could find them. Don't try and Samuel L. Jackson me. It's not going to happen. Um, he's, he's seriously not going to try to take me on here. He is taking his time. He is not uh, what we would call a rash man. Uh, but that's his turn. He just stands in the doorway after calling for guards. Uh, your turn, Butler. All right. Um, I am fine. I am going to in, uh, drink the invisibility potion. It is consumed. And what is my sleight of hand? It's not great, but I'm going to try to come around over by him. I'm assuming he has a dagger. Um, let me look at his sheet. You can see he has some plate armor on. He has a battle axe. Um, instead of a dagger, he has a hand axe next to him. Oh, quite everybody has a dagger just to cut their meat and stuff. This is cool. Uh, his character sheet says two hand axes and no daggers, unfortunately. Uh, he also has a wine skin or water skin next to him and a mess kit on him. The, that's the five things he carries, plus his battle axe. Darn, I was going to try to, like, pickpocket, sleight of hand his dagger, get that bloody. Mm. And... <laughs> <laughs> and then just, like, hang out in the room, and he's like, I swear there's an invisible assassin here, I didn't do it! Just because there's blood on my dagger, which is sticking out of the Count's throat? Right, right. Oh, uh, crap. Well, that was going to be my gambit. Um, what are you going to do? Now, we're really sure that the chimney is a tight fit. I mean, you haven't examined the chimney yet. You haven't tried to look at it. You've just seen the fireplace from a distance. You All have right, to like, stick your head up there and see. I'll go over and very, very stealthily look up it. All right, you quietly move over there with your boots of elven kind. Take a peer up the chimney. 
It would be a tight fit. It's theoretically possible that it would need a 20 on an acrobatics check. And all of the soot from inside would ruin your invisibility. Yeah, it would come down. So what is the ceiling like up here? Can I do a, a Tom Clancy video game assassin, like, you know, you wanna, brace myself between some beams up above? You want to pull like a, a river tam? Yeah, you can do that. All right. Um, so, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a DC fifteen athletics check to climb up there. Uh, a DC twenty. So hold on, let me see. The ceiling is capable of that. The only issue okay. is getting to the ceiling without like knocking something on the wall and disturbing it to make it look like you're in that part of the room, right? So okay. DC fifteen to get up into the ceiling rafters and hold yourself. DC twenty to do it without attracting any attention. Can I use acrobatics to try to do it without yes. attacking attention? Acrobatics. That's what I'm. Yes, either one of those will do. All right. Uh, DC twenty. The odds aren't good. I can't like look around. Is there's not a place that's better? Like to this knock and knock things that I've got a little clearer path. Uh, I mean, lowered, like, you know, there's a, a nightstand or a, a bed table, one of these tables down here, but the issue is you want to be able to step on it without causing it to rock or shake or make any noise and then climb up it, right, to get, you know, the dwarf is looking around for an invisible person right now. Is this a chest over here? That is a chest. So that's, I could probably stand on that and it's not as likely to, I mean, that's a yeah. lot sta more stable than a nightstand. Sure, uh, we'll bring it down to a DC 17 then to not attract any attention. All right, that's 50-50 or maybe 55-45. Oh, Woo! easy peasy. You hop to the chest, hop to the rafters, brace yourself in there. I want to get, can I get to over sort of up here by the ceiling? Because I'm figuring that with this smaller space, I can kind of brace myself easier and stay up there longer. I would say with your gloves of swimming and oh, climbing, yeah, that's true. That's that gives you advanced, no, that gives you regular movement rate on everything. So I'd say with those gloves, you can find a way to get a grip on something that will like allow you to swing from one rafter to the other. Um, All right, because basically I'm looking for a spot where I could maintain for as long as I need to, staying up mm -hmm. out of reach. All right. Uh, the dwarf starts shouting. Um, he doesn't open the door. In fact, he starts to lean against the door and starts shouting behind him saying, it's invisible. It's a murderous wizard. He's in here somewhere. And you can hear the, the sound of footsteps coming as people are racing to arrive. Um, it's gonna be at least another combat round before anyone does though. So you still have time, it's your turn. I'm guessing he's a seventh level fighter or something, and I really don't want to fight him in a in a anywhere close to fair combat. All right, so you're in the rafters. You've moved to a slightly different location. Uh, there's pounding on the door. Ulin lets in some guards. Uh, and a fourth one he tells to not let anybody out of the room, no matter who they are or what they look like until a thorough investigation has been done. He could be a shape changer. He went invisible. He, he could alter himself to look like any one of us. Don't let anyone out for any is reasons. The door, is the door open or closed? Um, he's going to close the door after this conversation has been had. All right. Um, and the best I can do for now. So one guard on the outside, door is closed with the instructions. Nobody comes out for any reasons. Um, I'm gonna block off your line of sight out to the doorway now. There we go. And it's you, Ulin, and three guards. All I can do is stay up on the ceiling. Let's sort them. There we go. So, 
Uh, Ulin stays by the door. He tells the rest of the guards, you know, this may be Count Trooper's final bedroom, final resting place, but you gotta make sure he's not around. You gotta stab everything, knock everything over, make a mess of the place, but find the assassin. Uh, and they start taking their spears and just swiping them in the open air and stabbing at things and kicking stuff around and start making a mess of the ground area. Uh, a minute passes and they've done their sweep of the ground floor and found nothing. Ulin's going into a rage, ranting about, I can't get away. There's no what uh, He hasn't broken a window. There's there's nothing coming from the chimney. The, the door's been blocked the whole time. He must be in here somewhere. Check the rafters. Check under the bed. Check in the tre check in the chest. Check under the tables. Check it all. What are you going to do, Invisible Butler? All right. If they start to, what I'm going to try to do, since I'm very quiet with boots of... Uh, Help you by stealth and everything here. If they do start to come over and it looks like they're going to um, stab where I am, then I'll move. I'm figuring the chimney is a great thing to climb around mm -hmm. um, and kind of like you know swing around up towards the top. In my in my experience, when you have like a fancy room in a palace, it's probably got a high ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, so like you know, come around to the other side and try to avoid. If any stabs, if anybody looks like they're going to start stabbing my direction. Right. Okay. Well, they do. Uh, they start poking at the ceiling, poking at the rafters, double checking the floor. Eventually, someone comes over. Yeah, once, once it seems like they've cleared an area of like, mm -hmm. well, they've poked the ceiling all around over here. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to move over to an area they've already cleared. Right. Okay. Um, so at some point... We're gonna have, so you, you hmm, how do we wanna do this? Give me another acrobatics check. That's my target. Uh, something probably pretty low, like a 15. Uh... All right, so you're trying to move from one spot to the other um, to avoid this incoming guard, and you do, you successfully move, but in the process of moving from here to here, something creaks, you know, you're holding onto this rafter and it like bends a little bit and there's a bit of a and Ulan immediately looks to the spot where it goes and is going to make an attack. He's gonna have disadvantage because you are invisible, but he's attacking the correct square. Um, attack roll with disadvantage. A 19, oh my God. Is that gonna hit you? Yeah, that'll hit me. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, he will slash you for a measly eight points of damage with his... Is that... That can't be right. Really? No, that's right. That's right. Six, five, three... Why is that not adding the plus one magic bonus into there? It should be nine points of damage. For, it's a plus one battle axe. Five, three, and one should be nine, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't know why it's not adding the extra one, but it's nine damage uh, to you and your hit. Uh, it produces a, a little bit of blood, splatters on the ground, axe comes away red. Um, but you are, I think you maintain your invisibility even when hit. Yeah, so I have to make an attack to right. reveal myself. All right, you're back in the rafters. Oh, he gets two attacks per round, doesn't he? He does. He'll make his second attack as well. Um, second attack with disadvantage is only a 13, which is, I think, a miss against you. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll... Your turn. Scramble to the far side of the room. Across the ceiling. I can move at my normal movement rate, so this is extremely quick. Mm -hmm. Probably faster than they realize that I can go. Really easy, just kind of dancing around the room. Uh, okay, so you start moving about. Yeah, um, I'm, I think I'm pretty much doomed at this point. All right, another guard, after another few minutes, uh, is going to be coming and poking your area, so I'm gonna need you to make me another acrobatics check, unless it's something you can think of. 
Are you gonna get uh, out of what here? What do I got here? Can't think of anything particularly useful I can do with the immovable rod. Um, I suppose I could have used it to bar the door and go up the chimney before, but oh well. Too late for that now. Um, I guess I'll just have to do the acrobatics check. Ooh, very nice. You easily get out of the way from any incoming spears without attracting any attention. Uh, and this is when you hear the arrival of extra footsteps and people shouting through the door and the guard on the outside saying, no one's allowed I'm, in. And... All right, I'm gonna stay over nearish. Well, I've got regular movement with mm -hmm. climbing. Yep. So if the door opens, I wanna try to be able to go through the top of the door, like over the head of anybody who comes in. Okay. Rush for it. Once I get out of this goddamn room, I think it's going to be clear sailing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just. Uh, so you took nine damage, so you are at 22 out of 31 right now. Yeah, it ain't good. It ain't good at all. Um, so there's a, a, some people at the door. The guard on the outside is saying, no one goes in or out. The, you know, the count's been murdered. Call the constables. Call the the sheriff, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and Ulan on the inside says, the, the assassin's been wounded. We, we hit him once, but we can't find him anywhere. We think he's a spellcaster. Should stay back. Um, and I guess there's just more people outside the door right now. Uh, a few more minutes are gonna pass and someone's gonna come in your direction again and make another stab at you. Give me that acrobatics check. Oh, Ooh, you botch it. Uh, you definitely reveal your location, and Ulin this time steps away from the door because you know you're not quite within striking range. Um, so he comes towards you and makes his two attacks. Uh, a fourteen is not going to hit you. Gracie is fifteen. It's a yeah. close one. The second attack comes in with another. Whoosh, 11. Swing and a All miss. Right, he's away from the door. Can I go over him? And yes. he he didn't. You never said he grabbed the key or anything, so the door isn't locked. Right. I'm gonna again from the up, up above throw open the door and then try to go without not dropping to the ground. Go through the door. How do you open the door without dropping? I'm gonna to kind of climb. Well, what what is the what is the handle of this door like? Uh, a roundy, turny knobby. All right, I guess I'll drop to the floor, turn the knob, and try to go up over the guard. All right, I'm so the door flies open, surprising the the guard and Ulin and Ulin, Ulin, and everyone around. And I try to go opens. up, and I'm guessing this this whole staircase. Actually, no. Can I just, given that I'm invisible, can I just try to? go past and just sprint. You'll have to make a shove action to get your way past him. Can it's I go open. up with the wall over him? You can try and make an acrobatics check to like hallway up and over him. All right. Go for it. 18. Oh, that's pretty good. You start climbing up and over him and around him and you find yourself on the other side of him. But I think the movement dropping, well, you can do you, you have gloves Remember, swimming and climbing. Action. Yeah, and you do have cunning action. So you can easily, yeah, I think you make it up and over and around um, and drop to the other side and you hear the shouts and the cries and, and the guard can't see you so he doesn't get an opportunity attack. And um, even with whatever movement are. I use to go up and over him, given that I basically got uh, 90 feet of movement as opposed to his 60. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing I should still be way ahead of him, even if he was sprinting in exactly the right direction. And I'm mm -hmm. going down, since I can go on the wall at um, regular speed, I'm going to stay on the wall so that people coming up the stairs I won't run into. Um, head down, get, as we, as we see the second floor. Uh, yes, we can get you to the second floor. 
just making some adjustments because I haven't had a time to look back at it yet now that there are, uh, you know, soldiers everywhere. And the constables have been called and all that fun stuff. All right. Okay, here we go. Bringing you to the second floor. Um, what you am I are seeing? dropping... you. So from the... The staircase looking down, you can see that there is a guard at the bottom of the staircase, spear out ready, because they can hear he hears the shouting from upstairs that the door's been opened and that, you know, the assassin's escaping! Stop it! Okay. And I'll, I'll shout from here, where it should be staircase given that above. I'm down the stairs. I shout in Olin's voice, All of you charge up here, block the stairway! All of you, god damn it, before I take your heads! in Olan's voice, or Olan's voice. Olan's voice, to which Ulan says, that's not my father! That's the, that's the assassin! Kill him! All right. Which is and very I'm... confusing to everybody involved. Yeah, so coming around uh, here. The staircase goes down this way. You're going to have to go okay. past the guard. Um, but I'm staying up on the wall, so I'm going over him, right? Um, right. Okay, hold on. Staircase. I'm, I'm guessing this is like high ceiling area. I mean, you if you had this giant, amazing atrium area, it wouldn't have... Like, it's not low ceilings. Right. So the stairway that comes down... Uh, let's actually, we need to flip back up to the third floor for just a moment to make sense of all of this. Okay. So it looks like on the third floor, it's a, a hallway with a nice tall ceiling and the staircase comes down, but there's not a stairwell on the second floor. So I think the second floor has like a staircase that protrudes from the wall and heads up, but there's not like a, what do you want to say? I want to, I need a drawing. I need to doodle. Um, so basically I could go this way, like over the railing. So if this is a side view to the north a little bit of the staircase, um, it would like level off on this floor over here. And there's like a hallway that leads back like this. Mm -hmm. um, but this lower part of the staircase doesn't have a wall to brace yourself against. So you have like Mr. Guardman standing over here. But I'm here. invisible. I could go drop over this way. Oh, like off the side of the staircase yeah. like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that'll probably work. Yeah, that'll work just fine. It's All right, perfect. I'll do it. And from what I can see, this door is open. Uh, yes, the door to the outside is open. There's a guard standing uh, across the area with a, his, um, what do you call it? Spear outside to side to block anything walking past him. All right, I'm gonna try to limbo under his spear invisibly. All right. So we've gone 40 feet plus, that was 12. I shaved off the feet by ducking off the. Yeah, 12 plus 20 is 32 plus, what do we call this? 32 plus about 40 is 72. Um, and I've got you 90. Can, yeah, you can limbo under. Go ahead and make me a stealth check as you are running full tilt from all these people and sliding under guards. Oh my God, you're so quiet. Uh, you slip underneath the guard, no problem. Is it a marble floor? It is a marble floor. I will like kind of, as I'm running, just sort of like onto my knees, slide, matrix under it. You matrix under it, but look, look at what's beneath the guard. There's a carpet. The carpet tugs as you slide and matrix underneath him. Not with a 29. The carpet's gonna slide. You can't slide across carpet over a marble floor. Oh, fine then. Well, I specifically asked about marble so that I could I, yeah. do something cool. You did something cool. Did something great. Anyway, you still have feet of, feats of movement. I think we're at 72 feet that you've moved so far. All right. And so how many squares more is that? Uh, each one of these squares is two and a half feet. Uh, this is a balcony, right? Um, you're on the second floor, so there is a, a 10 foot drop to the top of this staircase and another 10 foot all the way what down. Is the, what's the drop over to this statue? Uh, probably the top of the statue is probably at level with you, actually. All right, and it's only 
two and a half feet from the balcony. So I Easy. swing over the balcony onto Pop the statue. On the statue. Yep. Using my climbing, maintaining everything full speed. Yep. And, and out I go. Shimmy down the statue onto the ground floor. Get us to the ground floor. All right, so here you are. Ground floor. Um, All right. Looking around, you can see. Oops, you're not here anymore. Uh, you can see that there are two guards at the front door in the same direction that you originally came from. They are blocking the gate, and one of them is pulling down the portcullis. All right. As they are blocking the gate. Oh no, that will stop everybody who's restricted to the ground. Um, uh, hold on, that was 10, 27, 72, 75, let's call it, and 10 uh, is 85. You have another five feet of movement that you can use if you want. All right. Um, so over to here, it's kind of hanging yeah, off here, so I don't perfect. get... I'm going to make sure I'm not... Well, I guess sort of here on the base of the statue so that if someone goes running up there, they don't run into me. Okay. So the guards on the left side lower their portcullis, uh, blocking the entryway from the, the castle grounds. I need to take a look and see how high. So this, this wall here is about 10 feet high, uh, made out of stone. Actually, it's, sorry, it is 20 feet high. Um, this is a, a 10 foot height wall here and then another 10 feet up here uh, to get to the top of that. So you're in a courtyard, 20 foot walls all the way around you, uh, portcullis down, guards in the front, guards in the building. All right, so next round, have my full um, I'm using my bonus action, 90 feet of movement. Got to go move NPCs. Um, Ulan tries to leave. The guard says, you told me not to let anyone out. Ulan's like, you idiot, he just ran past you. Um, so I should shout over my shoulder in his father's voice. That's not my son. It's the shape changer. 22. That's pretty good. Uh, 22. Two plus thirteen. Yeah, because he did shout. He specifically six. shouted about shape changers. He did. Don't let anybody out, even me. Yep, yep. <laughs> he did. But then you did get out, and it was sort of obvious. And yeah, it, it's confusing for the guard. He doesn't know who's order to follow. So Ulan's coming down the stairs. He's out. He's out. I don't know. That guard was ordered not to let the shape changer out. Yeah, he's also not going to stop a raging Ulan who's. And level Who specifically fighter. told him to stop a raging uh, Ulan? I know. <laughs> They're going to need new workers. It's ridiculous. Um, all right, so from inside on your turn, you can hear Ulan's voice shouting, "The is somewhere! Check everything! Check all doors and windows! Stop him! Uh, at which all point, right. one guard will step out and start looking around, just like with his eyes. And you can hear Ulan behind him saying, he's invisible, you fools. Uh, but that doorway right. is now open. And I'm and... gonna, so I'm up here base. All right, so basically I get to the top of the statue so that my voice will seem like it's coming from the second floor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, out through that opening. And I'll shout in uh, the son's voice towards the guards at the gate. Um, you fools. Block the front, uh, the front door to the palace immediately. Turns around. What? Huh? No, the, I'm shouting at these guards over here. Oh, right. Okay. Um. Well, without any like gesticulation, I don't think they know the subject of your intent. You might be shouting uh, at them, but I think all the guards are thinking that you're shouting at them at this point. Okay. Yeah. So if they're not charging, I'm just gonna use my 90 feet of movement. Basically, I'm gonna. Come over around here and scale the wall. Five. Uh, yep, 
you can go up the 20 feet. Can you give me one of those acrobatics checks again to see if there's anything that you disturb along the way? See if you make any signs? Probably oh, dear not. God. You're going to do well. Is that a 25? Oh, I get advantage. Woo. Well, the, you present the first number anyway, right? And I, oh, I was sorry. I had the uh, my character sheet over there. I was looking at that goddamn eight in acrobatics. Oh. Like, I got an eight again. <laughs> no, 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 no. You get a 25. You easily scramble over there, make it to the wall, scamper up, hop over and down the other side. Mm -hmm. And away. Yes. And away. In the most poorly planned of all my assassinations. Well, you only had a few hours to pull this one off. So yes. no prep time whatsoever. You make your way out into High Castle and escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that is going to conclude. I pick up Sophie. Pick up Sophie. I don't leave Sophie to, to rot in that, that tavern. Uh, I think I don't this... want anyone accusing me of leaving Sophie behind. Uh, yeah, she she makes it out safe and sound. A little disappointed that there was no tuna. I mean, what sort of hotel only serves milk, please? And I mean, where did this milk even come from? Was this milk from Bessie, or was this just like regular old cow's milk, huh? Well, Bessie <sighs> can only be found in Desu, so... Guess who doesn't exist? She's if, found in Berkshire. If it was Bessie's milk, it would have to be in cheese form. Uh, so that's is going to conclude our main storyline for Assassin. We will be back next week with a special non-canon standalone adventure in Water Deep, I believe. Uh, we got to make sure we get everything ready for that, though. So all of this so far has taken place in a homebrew world. And um, I like to call it Desu world. This is not Desu world. Absolutely not. And these events all play together in a greater story that takes place over there. Uh, the fallout of the events of this, what we've done here can be found in um, other campaigns that I've run like uh, Hardcore Heroes and Frozen Frontier and the upcoming Akuba Knights campaign. So if you're interested in more of this world, that stuff is around. And I think next week we're going to be doing a special Waterdeep mission. But that concludes us for the day. Rob, do you have any wor final words of the main storyline? Uh, no, I, I, I want to thank everybody for watching. And, you know, if a merciless killer who is a terror to cow and peasant alike seems like the kind of person that you'd like to tell your troubles to or to hire to tell troubles, you know, to, to listen to people's troubles at a, uh, at a business that you might own, then hey. Uh, hey, indeed. You can just find our Rob around. So I am assuming that in Waterdeep we'll be dealing with the uh, the manta ray conspiracy. I haven't actually sorted out the Waterdeep stuff yet. Uh, this next week, this week and the beginning of next week is when we will be doing our my planning for the Waterdeep mission. Oh. Um, so I've well, got to go I look think, at all the I think NPCs. It's pretty there. canon that the manta rays are wield good people. Great power there. I mean, obviously, they have a lot of power in Waterdeep. It's got water right in the name. Manta rays are good people, Rob. Stop trying to kill them. Uh, but that's it. That's it for Assassin. Right. We will see you all around. Bye-bye.